Greetings, team. Today, I have something for you that I didn't think was going to be possible, but a real-world application for the Pico Calc. Now, this real-world application utilizes my Pico Pack design that I showcase in another video, and the reason it utilizes that is because I wanted the nice upright standing feature, and that way I could plug in the module that I'll be using directly in and so I could edit and test out the code uh, while still holding it upright and in a semi-mobile position. Uh, now, why I say this is a real-world application, recently my Mr. Cool DIY Mini Split failed. Well, not really. The Wi-Fi module on it failed, which for some reason uh, they decided to make this very cheap small dongle that's about $70 on Amazon. Now the reason I have this dongle is purely so I can run their comfy mode to prevent my office, the, the room we're standing in, from freezing. Without this module, I was under the assumption that I would have to keep the mini split constantly on and having it be at the lowest it would let me do is 60, which is way too warm for a room that I'm only in a couple of days out of the week. Most of the time, I wanted to keep it at 40, just a, a little comfortable for the electronics I keep in here. Looking at their user manual exhaustively, they have a freeze protection mode. You just have to drop it all the way to 60 and double press on the down button, and then boom, you are in freeze protection mode. So you really don't need this, so I don't need to buy this module. However, because it's something new, I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work. So I want to see the exact waveform when it kicks on and when it shuts off. So to do that, Yes, I could buy a very specific device for this one-time use, which is a thermal sensor that just logs data over the 8 to 12 hour period that I'd like to do. Or I can use my general purpose computational device. I thought, oh, it might be a little difficult. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the code challenge, but quite literally, Here's the code for it. It fits on one screen. It fits on the PicoCalc screen right here. And the reason for that software that this is uh, ships with, PicoMite, has device support. And one of the devices it supports is a temperature sensor 18B20. Now, the reason I have this kit out here is because if you are in the world of electronics, there's a good chance you have something like this. And if you don't, I'll go ahead and link this so you can get this on Amazon. So I'm able to grab that sensor out of here, slap it on the back, Grab a 4.7K ohm resistor to uh, do a pull-up on it. The manual here shows you exactly what to do. It's very straightforward. Then it's as simple as running temp R. And uh, that's really what you do in order to utilize this device that I've put on the back of here to gather your temperature. You can then do some coding. I'll go ahead and actually put the text up on the screen here for you. The first thing I do is I set the directory with the drive command to drive B, which if you have the stock firmware on the PicoCalc, is the drive letter for the SD card that sits in the side of the device. I then took that, converted to Fahrenheit, and then the Fahrenheit variable is what I put in the XLS file. Now, one thing you have to do before you run the command is you do have to set your time if you want to actually log the temperature over time. And since I'm doing it at night, I'd like to actually see when the peak in the cold was so I can actually compare it to what the outside temperature was for that evening. This will also help me understand how good the insulation is in this outdoor room that I made not more than a year ago. So it's a little two-parter there. After that, I can then pop the SD card out after I'm done and look at it and uh, see the graph. So here's the graph of what I did. It worked. <laughs> I'm very, very happy with that. Saved myself a couple of bucks. I did not have a temperature logger, believe it or not. I have a lot of temperature devices. I just don't have a temperature logger. So why I like the Pico Calc more than, say, an Arduino is it has the battery thing whole f all figured out for you i also have little options to snap things onto here to allow me to put a breadboard right on it and to just set it up and run i can also code right on the device whereas the arduino i'd still have to find a battery a power source 
I'd have to program it externally. I would then have to have the laptop set up to uh, set time if I wanted to log time. I would also then have to get an SD card connection and, and hook up that way. So yeah, I could do it, but it, that would be a project, you know, by itself. Whereas with the Pico Calc, all of the annoying little mundane stuff that make electronics projects kind of annoying, it's already done for you. It's got the battery, it's got the data storage, it's got the connection and I.O. outs, it's got a screen, you can program it, it's got this little laptop basically all in one package. After this application, I'm just even more happy with the device and ever so glad that I bought it. Hopefully, uh, you, if you want to do a, a little data logger or mess around with the code that way, it's a great actual real world use case. Hope you enjoyed this simple explanation and I hope this video also makes you feel like you made the right decision on buying one of these PicoCalcs. So until next time, I'm the ill-informed human. Goodbye.